So I have here the brand new base model M4 MacBook Pro, and I've seen a number of questions asking about how Final Cut Pro performs on this machine. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna test out Final Cut Pro and compare it against the M3 MacBook Air to see how they perform and which one might make more sense for you. So let's jump right in and get started. So I went ahead and got Final Cut Pro set up on both of these machines. It's just an older project of mine, Apple Silicon versus Fine Woven from about a year ago. On the left, we have the M3 MacBook Air. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. It has an eight core processor and a 10 core GPU. On the right, we have the brand new M4 MacBook Pro. It has 16 gigabytes of memory, 512 gig SSD, a 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU. Now, unfortunately, the drives in both of these machines is a little small to be able to have multiple projects. So we're gonna be running these tests off of external SSDs. On the MacBook Pro, I have a USB 4 drive with NVMe. And on the MacBook Air, I have a Thunderbolt 3 drive. Both of these get around 24 to 2500 megabits or megabytes per second. So we're just gonna check out general performance, the playback, is there drop frames, and of course, do an export test as well. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is actually make sure that there is no cached information on these projects. So we can check out the actual performance of these in real time. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is actually go up to file and delete generated library files to clear out all the cache. So we're basically rendering everything on the fly. We're going to delete everything. Then we're gonna go up to view and tap on better quality to make sure that we're taxing the machine as much as possible. And just so you're aware, this video project is about nine and a half minutes long. It's really mostly just a multicam video with a couple of B-roll clips added on top. But if we go into the multicam, you can see that there's just a couple of shots and each one of those has a LUT and some color adjustments as well. So now we're gonna start the video playing at the same time, the same place, and you'll see there's a couple of effects that will come up. And if anything's gonna cause some performance issues, it's going to be that. And of course, this is rendering two multicam clips in the background plus the effect. So we'll just go ahead and start it. Three, two, one, go, and watch for any performance issues. So right off the bat, I'm not seeing anything at all. We'll see what happens once we get up to the effects. Now we got a little bit of a zoom effect coming in. And this would tax the system just a little bit. And you can see actually the GPU is jumping up a bit as it's trying to render those effects in real time. We have another one coming up. So this zoom is happening. It's rendering on the fly for playback. And you can see that CPU usage is actually not that bad. These are HEVC files. So there is a built-in hardware HEVC encoder decoder with the uh, media engine, but the GPU is being hit quite a bit. And actually the GPU on the 10 core uh, MacBook Pro is actually being hit harder than the M3 MacBook Air for some reason. Now, the next thing I wanna do is just kind of scrub around real quick and see what the performance is like and just hit play randomly and see if there's any stutters or issues starting and stopping. So here we'll just kind of randomly scrub around and hit play. And there is no delay at all with either one of these. We'll do that again. We'll just go ahead and hit the space bar, kind of go to another spot, hit the space bar. And look at that, both of these just right off the bat, they jump right off the line and get right into it without any issue on this video. So next we're going to do an export test using H.265. And since again, there is no background rendering on these machines, it means that they're gonna have to work on the fly to pull in all that data and add the colors and add the effects all in real time. So for format, it's gonna be computer, video codec, HEVC, 10 bit, it is 4K, and we're just going to save only. We'll hit next. And we'll just go ahead and drop those into the downloads folder and I wanna click save on both of these at the same time, so I have to start the timer first, so we'll go at about two seconds. So one and go. And here we go, we are off to the races. We'll see which one of these come out on top. So about 50 seconds in, and we are about a quarter of the way on both of these machines. We'll just go ahead and bring this guy up and watch it. So we're about 22% on the Air and 26% on the Pro. And you can see the GPU is actually being hit on both of these pretty uniformly. They both have a 10 core GPU, so that probably makes sense. Now we're at about 50% on the MacBook Pro at about a minute and 45 seconds or so, and 47% on the Air. You can see that again, the GPU is still about the same. For some reason, there's a little bit more CPUs on the MacBook Pro, and I'm not sure exactly why. It must be something else going on in the machine, but it's still a bit faster than the Air at this time. There we go. The MacBook Pro completed in three minutes and 32 seconds, and the MacBook Air is still going a little bit. Got about 5% left to go. So the final results, and remember I started the timer at two seconds in, the MacBook Pro completed in three minutes and 30 seconds, and the MacBook Air took an additional 25 seconds. Both of those are really good. Again, this is a nine and a half minute video 
with multicam and a couple of layers. But let's try something just a little bit harder. All right, so here's a video with more layers, more effects, and more angles in the multicam as well. So let's go ahead and just start playback and see if there's any performance issues with a bigger video file on either of these machines. Go ahead and hit the space bar. And right off the bat, again, I'm not seeing any performance issues with playback, which is really good. These are 4K files, HEVC coming from Sony cameras, and this is just really good playback performance on both of these machines. So just randomly scrubbing through on both of these machines, everything looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any issues, and we'll just go ahead and hit play somewhere. And yeah, no performance issues again, even on a heavier project than the previous one. So that's all really good news for both of these machines. Now let's go ahead and do an export test and see how that comes out. So again, here are the same settings, the computer format, HEVC 10-bit, 4K, and we're gonna save it. It's gonna be about 7.8 gigabytes when complete. Tap on next. And let's see, we'll just go ahead and title it something different. And I'm going to start the timer and then hit save. So here we go. Start the timer and one, go. So about two seconds starting and they are off to the races. We'll go ahead and open up this panel right here so we can see what percentage the video is done and see how that goes. So we're about 20% in on the MacBook Pro at about two minutes and 18%. So just a couple percent behind on the M3 MacBook Air. But on this video, it's interesting. You can see that the usage of the GPU is higher. It's like pegging the GPU a lot of the time compared to the previous video where it just was maybe around 75 to 80%. This is definitely using more. And there we go, the MacBook Pro completed its 23 minute video export in 10 minutes and 40 seconds. And we got about 25% to go on the M3 MacBook Air. And the M3 MacBook Air finished in 14 minutes and 41 seconds or about four minutes slower than the MacBook Pro. Now that's quite a big difference from the shorter video. When we did the seven, whatever, seven and a half minute video export, it was only about 10% slower. I mean, this is about 40% slower compared to the MacBook Pro, which means that with this longer video export, there's more than likely thermal throttling happening in, happening in the M3 MacBook Air, and that's unfortunate. But what this does tell me still is that both of these devices can do pretty well for anyone looking to get started in video editing or video recording. I mean, even though this computer was probably thermal throttling because of the, the temperature on the export, like it's still just playing just fine. So even though the CPU is hot, it's still scrubbing through and playing just fine, which means either of these computers are gonna be pretty darn good for most people for video editing. And if you're curious, here is the Geekbench 6 results with the M4 MacBook Pro being about 25% faster in both single and multi-core scores compared to the M3 MacBook Air and about 17% faster than the M3 Air when it comes to the metal GPU test. So that's my initial Final Cut Pro performance test between these two machines. And the good thing is they both perform pretty well for everyday video editing, which means you have options. Now, of course, there's a lot of other things to consider or decisions to make when you're comparing the M3 MacBook Air versus the M4 MacBook Pro. And I'm definitely going to be doing a full comparison. So hit subscribe if you do want to see that video. But until then, you definitely want to check out this video right over here. It's just for you. I know it. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want. And I'll see you next time.